Next one, smart home, smart home hub solution. So I think many people have um, horror stories of trying to figure out how to adopt this and, and similar to Latch, adopting something and then finding out that it, it just isn't going to deliver what it's promised. Um, who wants to start here? I know there's a few people with thoughts. You... I wrote down a couple of thoughts. You you want to share first? Or? Sure. I don't mind. So, uh, so yeah, from a, a smart hub, I'll, I'll go back to the, the ecosystem, right? Have an ecosystem, uh, uh, me as an owner operator, I would prefer not to provide consumer electronic devices uh, to the resident other than just having a platform for them to be able to bring their devices. BYOD. Connect, yeah, <laughs> connect those devices. Yep. And, then, and then use those devices and take them and all the privacy concerns uh, with them when they move out uh, <laughs> is, uh, is kind of the, the approach that, uh, that we like to take. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and I think we've touched on that. And I hope if we've driven anything home, it's that, right? Start with the foundation of internet and then start adding um, smart home devices. Also, you know, when you're testing different hubs, you're going to have a wonderful salesperson who is really passionate about their product and says, you can charge $100 more a unit for this product. Um, and we've done some testing on how to charge for a smart home and smart home features. And what we found is people want a BYOD. So they aren't necessarily open to paying um, $100 a month or whatever it might be to have these smart um, devices within their units. So if you're just trying to get your feet wet, I'd recommend you look at, um, once you have foundation and you have um, community-wide Wi-Fi, you look at maybe your penthouse units or your townhome units that are really garnering the highest rental rates and you can um, build in that cost within the, the monthly rent. Um, also being really careful about the selection criteria. So does your firm have selection criteria for something like this? This was something mentioned this morning. Um, that's first too, before you start picking solutions and working with others, um, having your IT involved, having someone in operations involved where you're all really putting your heads together about what makes the most sense for your company, your firm. And then the last one is security. So. You know, how are they approaching privacy? What countries are they buying their hardware from? Um, one of the companies that we like a lot is Smart Rent. They buy their boards from China. That's a concern for us, but we know that they wipe them and they put their own firmware on them um, once received. So those are the types of questions that I think are really important to ask around the security um, point. Yeah. So let's, do we want to dive into a little more detail here on the next one, which is privacy? Yeah. Chelsea, take <laughs> so the lead on this. I am the, the crazy person. I'll just admit it right, right here. Uh, my husband is a cybersecurity professional. He works on um, top secret networks for the government. So one of the things in, when I come over to our industry, to multifamily, that always interests me is how are we handling non-users, people who are either, like Catherine was saying a moment ago, can't or not interested in participating in smart home devices or networks. I think that's something that we really need to be aware of and think about. And I don't think that that has had a lot of attention to it, right? Um, I know the first time I brought home Alexa, I think it got thrown across the room and immediately put into the trash. He's like, get that out of here. So um, we have to be aware that there are a lot of people who are choosing to opt out um, or they want to be able to control it themselves. So how are we approaching privacy? I know I had a excellent conversation with the Duello folks um, earlier about privacy and data collection. So when people are asking you at your communities, how are you gathering my data? Do you know how many times I flush my toilet? Right? Like what's going on with that? How are you going to answer those questions? I'd love to hear from you guys about that as well. What do you think around data collection and privacy? What are the hot topics or hot issues we need to be aware of? You want me to go first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I think that uh, from a, a data collection standpoint, you know, it's uh, uh, know the contract, read the contract between you and the vendor. Uh, there was, uh, you know, of 
Corterra had uh, some privacy concerns about a vendor that was recently, recently purchased by the person that was sitting in my seat earlier this morning. Uh, and so uh, they had language in their contract that did not comply with our, our corporate policy. Mm -hmm. uh, once they were purchased, uh, that language did jive, so we were able to kind of uh, rewrite that, but really just look into the contract for that aspect. And then, and then from a, what happens inside the unit, if it's occupied, I don't really want to know unless it is something critical, dead batteries in a lock or, you know, a leak or a, a anything like that. Uh, if it's vacant, then, you know, we'll, we'll take the, the ownership in the, from the privacy aspect of it because it's a vacant unit, no one yeah. living in it. Yeah. Yeah. In, our, in our research with consumers, this, this can be a really dicey area in multifamily, yeah. right? Because sure. they have to consent to certain devices that are the property of the property owner and they're there to create operational savings and you can't do it on an opt-out basis. It's either they're all in or you're not all in. So, I mean, we've advised companies before to have a very clear privacy and security uh, commitment. You know, not legalese. I mean, a very clear, easily understood, this is our commitment as a property owner manager to your privacy and this is what we do. You know. Transparency as to here's how we're using the data, these are the situations, right. the scenarios. And we will wipe your data when you go, and with access control, this is what we do know, this is what we don't know, this is what we choose not to know, to your point. And I think that goes a long way. Um, we know young adults are very privacy conscious. It's and it, With IoT stuff, it's, it's, it's kind of a counterintuitive thing. We think they share everything on social media, uh, and they do, but they also are the first to be worried about hackers and that kind of thing because they understand how tech works. So, um, you know, you kind of have to make the commitments. We also learned some very kind of obvious things, but when you hear consumers talk about it, it makes a point like cameras. Like consumers are very sensitive. Who installs a camera? Where the camera goes? They don't want anything pre-installed inside the unit. <laughs> And they have a visceral response to that. And even video <laughs> doorbells and common area cameras, sometimes there could be a lot of sensitive, sensitivity to watching people come and go. And so, yeah, you have to be really careful about that. It, Chelsea, you might remind me of this on Gen Z, that some of the data on Gen Z says there is a lot more openness. If they can see the value that it gives to them, they are willing to share a lot more information that we, than what we might think, but they have to see the value and they have to understand what, what the agreement is. I know like in student housing, there's, there's kind of a transition or at least some experiments with, um, instead of even ID or phone, it's facial recognition and that students are saying, Heck yeah, I'm all in on that. I don't have to worry about carrying anything with me. I can get in and out of wherever I need to be, but it'll take some time for that to bubble up into other areas. Yeah, I think, and not to offend any of my fellow elder millennials, I'm embarrassed to even say that, they're <laughs> <laughs> above that. But we really have to be aware that um, some of our younger generations are all about technology. If it improves their uh, usage, the ease of their ease for them, um, makes things easier, but they probably know more about it than we do, unfortunately. And so you also have to be prepared to answer their questions about data, about privacy, about network vulnerabilities and what you would do, because frankly, it's probably some you know 13 year old right now who's gonna be renting from you in a few years who is hacking something and <laughs> knows about what's going on. Um, so you've gotta be able to answer their questions and be on top of what, what the technology is gonna be, what it's gonna look like, and how you're gonna prevent issues in the future. Yeah, and it's not just you answering the questions, it's your leasing consultant exactly. answering the questions. So anytime you're doing um, a smart home or any of these initiatives within your project, how are you training them, A, to sell it? I've been to a ton of tours where I heard they had a great smart home set up and I wanted to go check it out. And they're like, oh, and I don't really know how this works. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, bummer, right? And they're not selling what you've invested a ton of um, capital into, A. And B, they're going to ask those hard questions. And if they're not comfortable with the answers that they're getting, they're going to go to the building next door. So, you know, it's there's you figuring that out and then it's how you're training and continuing to train if there's turnover and whatnot at a community um, to ensure that, that they are relaying the message. All right, we are at time. So we've got the contact information here. Real quickly, how can everyone find you um, over the next 24 hours? I thought you weren't posting our phone numbers. <laughs> <laughs> now Data privacy, there, geez, yeah. Brandon. Hey. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, I didn't put that slide together. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.